All right, Scott Stewart, I'm back with a uh, Liberty or Death tutorial, and we're moving on to the Declaration of Independence, turn seven. Patriot, Indian, French, British. So the options for us here, French and British activated last turn, so they have they are not eligible. So it's Indian and Patriot. So the Patriots get to go first with this card, and this is a very powerful card for the Patriots. Of course, the Declaration of Independence. So they're going to take the Shaded Event, of course, which allows them to come together, place three militia anywhere, one propaganda with each, place one fort anywhere. So propaganda is something that you can do with one of the actions or commands for the... Um, normally, something that you need to do with the Rebel Rousing command for the Patriots is how you place propaganda. Um, this explains here that propaganda is used. Um, but because of the card, they can do it for this one here. So propaganda is kind of used to slow down British um, abilities in that area, kind of, is kind of what it is. Makes it a little harder for the British to, to move opposition around and, and stuff of that nature. So. Um, they're going to place three militia anywhere in an attempt to create a concentrated force <clears throat> to fight the British. They're going to place all three in Massachusetts. So Massachusetts is building up big time, and it's a, still a pretty big force in New York Colony. They have three left, so they're going to place all three in Massachusetts, which isn't really big enough to hold all this. <laughs> There are overflow areas on the board, which we could technically use. Might as well show that works. So there's an overflow area B and an overflow area A way up top. And there's two markers, overflow A. Um, there's an overflow A marker and an overflow B marker. So here's A, double-sided. So the way you use these, and actually I don't know how to use these, but I'm assuming. It's kind of like War of the Ring, which I played a lot of. Um, we could place this overflow marker in Massachusetts and then move all those troops to the overflow. Actually, I want to do overflow B because that's closer over here. Put the overflow B marker there and move all these troops and everything into that space if it starts to get too full. So I'm going to put this here. Overflow B. in uh, Massachusetts and then move all those um, troops and Washington and the fort. I don't know if you move all of them but I'm just going to do that for now. Like I said I haven't read up on how these work I'm assuming we can move all these to this overflow because you know if you've got too many units on the map and that's fallen off and some are going into other territories and you can't remember later where they're supposed to go then that's a good thing to do to kind of mitigate that issue. Okay, so they place all three in Massachusetts with three propaganda markers and they can place a fort um, also. So the propaganda markers have to go where the militia went. So we're going to get three propaganda markers. These are kind of like the raid markers, the double-sided propaganda on one side. And then on the other side we have a character, so character name um, it didn't say which one to use specifically, so we're just going to take three. We're going to take Hancock, Paul Revere, Hancock, Paul Revere, and uh, where's our boy? Where's our boy? There we go, Samuel Adams, one of my favorite beers. And he is more than just a beer. He's also... A man. So these three prop propaganda markers are going to head into Massachusetts as well. So we'll just put them in the overflow for now. And they can build a fort where they want. One fort anywhere. So they're going to take one of their available forts from here. And they're going to place that fort in North Carolina to help rally reforces there. 
which was just raided actually. It has they know that there's Indians there, so they have a militia underground, a continental, and now a fort in North Carolina. To help rally the forces there. All right, so that's the Patriots' turn. So the Indians turn, and that was uh, to take the event. So the Indians can command and may add a special activity since the event was taken for the Patriots. Command and may add special activity. Um, but they're going to decide not to, actually, and instead elect to pass. Interesting. One potential reason is the action... Is this action is that resources remain tight for the Indians. They're actually at zero, so they're very tight. <laughs> and they need funds with which to perform future commands. A second potential reason is that passing now will prevent the French from playing on the next card, Stockade Indians, if Britain takes a limited command or the event action. Or the event. Actions are very powerful, so denying a faction an action is often worth a pass. So this next card, Stockbridge Indians... Um, the French will actually be able to take that card. If the Indians did an action, they wouldn't be able to do anything next turn because they'd be ineligible. So the British would go first, who would probably obviously not want to play the card, but if they did a command and special activity, then it would allow them to, uh, the French to play the event. Or if the British decided to pass, then the French could have used the event for the first action. And what they're trying to do is not have three militia in Massachusetts, add three militia to Massachusetts or any one space with an Indian piece. So they could have uh, gotten hit hard with some militia in any Indian area. And they're trying to prevent that by passing. So they're going to pass by moving here. And passing for Indians gives them plus one resource also. So since they have zero resources, this helps them a little bit. So the resources go from zero to one. They're at zero, they move up to one. So there is that. Alright, so that is um, the end of the round. Even though there was only one action taken, you need two to do the round. Passing doesn't count, there's nobody else eligible. So the Patriots move over to ineligible. The Indians are still eligible because they only passed and the French and the British move over to the eligible faction so they can take they can all do something the next turn oh at least two of them can um Stockbridge Indians gets moved over to the active card for next turn and we flip over try and plot who is going to be the card after the next turn so we'll be moving in to Stockbridge Indians game turn eight next. Okay, so we're in turn eight here, Stockbridge Indians, which is Indians, British, French, Patriots. But what's going to happen here is the French are finally going to get into the war. So before the Indians, who is the first eligible faction, and they are eligible to, to play, can play, the French trump the card. They trump the event card with their Treaty of Alliance card. So they place their Treaty of Alliance card, which itself cannot be trumped. So if you play a trump card and somebody else wants to stop you, they can play their card on top of yours if eligible. Depends how the cards work, but this one cannot be trumped. And it can trump any brilliant stroke or event. So if French preparation which we've talked about numerous times, um, is greater than 15, which it is, it's at 21, the French can play this. So the French entered the war by playing this card. Fre French free muster and place Rochambeau there, raise the French naval intervention level, um, one level. And then three French and three British regulars, first from unavailable, then if there's none left to take from there, then they take from... Uh, First from unavailable, then, if necessary, from available to West Indies. Alright, so they're basically trumping the Stockbrook Indians card, which means the Stockbrook Indians card, cannot, Stockbridge Indians cards, cannot be used. It's been trumped. <coughs> Excuse me. So the French have entered the war, officially. Um, so they land in America by mustering. And, um... 
They can place four regulars from available into Massachusetts, which is what they're going to do because of the card. Fresh free muster and place Rochambeau there. So they can place up to four with their muster. So they're going to take four units from available. Let's put them in Massachusetts, which is over here in overflow B, which has become even insanely bigger. Um, and uh, Rochambeau is placed with the regulars in Massachusetts. So their guy is in to here as well. The French may then replace two of the French regulars that they placed with a fort, with a Patriot fort, if desired, spending one Patriot resource. Now the French have the option, and those, they can spend the resource, the Patriot resource, even if the Patriots don't want that, you know, they don't agree, but it's their turn, they have control of their alliance right now. Um, but they're going to decide not to do that, so they're going to keep what they did. There's already a fort there for the Patriots anyway. Um, so, the French Naval Intervention is raised to one. That is here. This track. There is a French Naval Intervention piece that is used to keep track of this. So, it gets moved to one. French Harassment. Okay. Anytime French Naval Intervention is increased, they can place a blockade marker on a city. So, they could take one of the blockade markers that they have from their squadron, French Blockade, and place this on a city, and they're going to place it on New York City, which is in control of the British and has quite a, a bit of troops here. It's controlled by Britain. It has pa passive support and a fort, three uh, regulars and a fort. So they're going to take the blockade and choose New York City. So they place this here, and they're blockading New York City now. Um, and by blockading a city... The support there is negated as long as the blockade remains. So they have passive support times one in a two population city, so that's two support that's negated from the British. So their support falls from five to three. So if we look over here, their support is at five, so they lose two to three. So it doesn't seem like it takes away the passive marker. It doesn't drop to neutral or anything, but the blockade stops the support coming in. So you you subtract their support, but it's still a passive supported city. It just gets blockaded from using those those uh, that support gets knocked down as long as it's blockaded. So if that blockade leaves, the support will go back up two points basically at this moment the way it's set up. <laughs> Excuse me. Now um, the French take one regular from unavailable and two from available because first you can go from unavailable to go to the West Indies. That's part of the card. And they only have one in unavailable. So they take one here and two from available. And they place those units in the West Indies. And the British have to do the same because of the card. So they, if they have any unavailable, they can go there first. They need to move three units. They actually have three unavailable units up here. So they can take all three from unavailable and put those in the West Indies as well. So the movements are dictated by the Treaty of Alliance card. Because the British Stroke card was just played, all factions become eligible. So all factions now become eligible. So the Patriots could be moved over because of, of the Brilliant Stroke card was played. <clears throat> Excuse me. Flip the French prep marker to at war since it's no longer um, needed to indicate that the French have entered the war. So we flip the French prep marker over. Remember, it's French prep on one side and at war on the other side. So we move it to at war. And that is the end of the turn. And that's kind of interesting to me why. And I looked it up. And I couldn't find a reason why the turn is ending now. I thought, well, maybe if they play the Treaty of Alliance, just the turn immediately ends. But I didn't see that in the directions. I thought, well, maybe if you play a Brilliant Stroke card, the turn ends. But I didn't see that in the directions either. So I can't say why it actually either ended the turn here, unless I missed that when I was looking it up. Or if they're just deciding to end the turn in general and just basically just do the Treaty of Alliance in one game turn to just concentrate on that. Um... So, the game turn is going to end in the tutorial now, though. So, the Treaty of Alliance stays away. It's gone. 
Tyrant Plot moves to the played card pile, and the next card that will be coming up is Antoine de Sartine, no idea, Secretary of the Navy. Sartini, he is there for the next round. And we're almost done. We have uh, three more rounds, it looks like, because there was only one card left, which is going to be the Winter Quarters card, and that's where the tutorial ends. All right, so that's the end of uh, turn eight. So we have turn nine, and then Winter's Quarter coming up. We'll probably do Winter Quarter in its own video, so turn nine may be a short, short video. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to be doing in turn nine, but it may be extra short, because the Winter Quarters has got a lot of stuff going on, and I'm eventually assuming that's going to be a longer video. Alright, thanks for watching everybody. We'll take care and see you later.